Hi everyone and welcome to Lincoln Park Zoo. I am so glad to have you here today. On today at Stay Tuned to the Zoo, we're gonna talk a little bit about enrichment. Now first, we're gonna spin the wheel to see what type of enrichment we're gonna talk about today. Great, we got food enrichment. So there are a couple of different ways that food enrichment can be given to animals here at Lincoln Park Zoo. Now we'll back it up a little bit and talk about what food enrichment is. These are gonna be different types of foods and different presentations of foods that are going to make a novel experience, a new experience, or encourage natural behaviors for a variety of species here at the zoo. Now the first thing that we talked about is different types of foods. So right here in front of me, we have a couple of different examples of different types of foods that may be given to diversify the diets of animals here at the zoo. You may see unsweetened cereal, raisins, unflavored popcorn, or even sugar-free gelatin molds that are given to a variety of species in order to encourage them to have a diverse diet. Now, a lot of the time, the presentation is going to be the thing that makes a huge difference in the lives of animals because that presentation being mixed up is going to encourage them to exhibit natural behaviors. Now, a couple of my favorite ways that we encourage animals to use those natural behaviors are some of these items over here. This is an example of a puzzle feeder. So if you can see real close here, this is a small log that has lots of little holes drilled inside of it. This type of puzzle feeder is often used in primate house to encourage the different primate species to dig into those little holes and find bits of food. Now, all of the food that's given to the animals here at Lincoln Park Zoo is part of their vet approved daily diet. So you may see things that are shoved inside, little pieces of fruits and vegetables, sometimes even insects, and then these are placed in the habitats in order for the primates to explore them and use their fingers, their hands, sometimes even their tails or their mouths to find those little pieces of food. Now another type of mechanical enrichment, like the um, puzzle feeders that food is put inside to make it into food enrichment, are things called pinatas. So if you can imagine, this is actually not a real log. It is made out of paper mache and it is painted very carefully by our volunteer enrichment group in order to be able to put food items right inside of here or in here and place very carefully and intentionally inside an animal habitat. For those animals that may find food items out in the wild inside of logs or other shapes that look like natural items in a habitat, that's going to encourage those species to dig on in there with noses or mouths in order to get the yummy food inside. Another type of food presentation that really might mix things up inside a natural habitat is presenting the food in a different way. So you or I, when we're eating dinner or lunch, we oftentimes are going to have our food very specifically on a plate or a bowl and using utensils. That's not always true with animals that live here at the zoo. So one type of way that you can do to encourage this kind of mix up of how the food is being presented is by bowls or covering the food in a different way. So if you take a peek in here, these are examples of primate biscuits. So these are nutrient dense little kind of pellets and these are given to a variety of species, um, especially primate species, mixed in with the rest of their fresh fruits and vegetables in their habitats. Now, it would be great if they could just get their food in a bowl every single day, but we wanna make sure that they're searching around their habitat just like they would do in the wild. They would also maybe come across some obstacles in the wild, like a branch being over food or having to dig inside of a hole or another part of their habitat. An easy way to replicate that is simply by placing a bowl right on top of some of their food. That way, once they enter their habitat in the morning or in the afternoon, there's this new object that they then have to search underneath in order to find some of those primate biscuits. Now, it doesn't just have to be primate biscuits. This type of thing, covering food or hiding it or stashing it in different areas of the zoo is really applicable for lots of species here at the zoo, big, small, primate or not. Now another one of my favorite types of food enrichment are meaty bones. So this one looks like it's already maybe been enjoyed here, but oftentimes for predatory species like polar bears, red wolves, or African wild dogs, this is gonna be put into their habitat to, enc to encourage that predatory behavior, like sniffing out their food and finding this meat product here that they can then use and sharpen their teeth and make sure that they're still very adept at using those predatory behaviors. 
This is a great way to mix it up for those predatory species and encourage that natural behavior. Now the last thing that I want to tell you about is a little bit about something called scatter feeding. So with all of these different types of hiding food, one of the simplest ways that zookeepers can mix it up for the animals is simply by literally scattering their food across their habitat. Especially for some of the great apes that live inside Regenstein Center for African Apes, this is a great way to encourage them to forage for their food. Romaine lettuce, sweet potatoes, carrots are all lots of vegetables. So sometimes when they are there in the morning, the zookeepers will let the great apes out of their bedrooms, kind of behind the scenes, and they will find food scattered all across their habitat. That seems messy to us, but it's perfectly normal for the great apes that live within uh, Regenstein Center for African Apes, and they spend quite a bit of time then finding all of their favorite bits of food and gathering those things up. That's exactly what they would do in the wild, spending that much time finding their food. Thank you so much for joining. Stay tuned to the zoo to learn a little bit about food enrichment. Next up, you may be able to cool down with another type of food enrichment of your own. Food enrichment is all about providing options. One of the easiest ways to bring food enrichment into your life is by trying different foods. Animal Care at the Zoo uses food enrichment in so many different ways. One of my favorite ways is ice pops. You may have seen the gorillas enjoying an ice pop full of delicious juice on a hot summer day, or even the seals tossing around a squid-filled ice pop in their pool. Today, we're gonna make our very own ice pops. You're going to need a few things to get started. First, an adult's help. This recipe is fun and easy, but it can get a little messy. You'll need a container for your ice pops. I'm using a silicone ice pop mold, and if you don't have an official ice pop mold, that's okay. You can use ice cube trays, old yogurt containers, even muffin tins. Get creative. Sticks for your ice pop. I'm using wooden craft sticks. Those work really well, but I also like to reuse plastic straws as sticks for my ice pops. Ingredients. Today I'm using raspberries and orange juice, but there are so many different ingredients you can include in here. Any fruit, fruit that's really ripe, might be going bad in a few days, is perfect. Vegetables like sweet potatoes and spinach. Juice like lemonade or orange juice. If you like creamier popsicles, you can use milk like coconut milk. And if you want it on the sweeter side, you can add honey, agave nectar, or even maple syrup. If you're using a lot of ingredients, you'll probably want a bowl so you can mix all those ingredients. And if you're having any trouble getting your sticks to stand up straight in your ice pop, tin foil is a great help. Last but not least, you're going to need a freezer to freeze your ice pops. So let's get started. I'm using raspberries and orange juice today. So I'm gonna start by putting a few raspberries in each of my squares. going to follow it up with some orange juice. Remember, liquid expands when it freezes. It gets a little bigger. So you don't want to fill your ice pops all the way to the top. You want to leave room for them to grow. Now is also a great time to taste your mixture. When food and liquid freezes, it actually loses some of its flavor. So if you feel like your ice pop needs to be a little stronger or sweeter, now is the time to add more flavors in. Now, Every popsicle needs a stick. My popsicles are made with juice. If you're using a creamier, thicker ice pop, your sticks will probably stand up straight without any help. But I'm going to add tin foil to the top of my ice mold. I'm going to poke those sticks through the tin foil, and that's going to help them stand up straight. Now we're ready for the freezer. Now we need to freeze our ice pops. Find a safe spot in your freezer, and depending on their size, they will have to freeze for four to eight hours. Yes, they're ready. Now it's time to carefully take our ice pops out of their mold. Oh, they look so good. I used a mold made of silicone, which is a flexible rubber, so my ice pops are going to be pretty easy to get out. If you're having any trouble with yours, you can always hold a warm washcloth to the bottom of your container, and that will help loosen up the ice. I'm 
Now is the best part, eating your ice pops. What did you use in your ice pops? How did they turn out? Can you think of any other ways to use food enrichment in your daily life? Thanks for watching Stay Tuned to the Zoo. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to see new episodes every Tuesday and Thursday.